Previously on Hexburg Devlog. But real medieval cities were often much larger, going into the tens of thousands. They would obviously not stay that large for long due to these guys. Today on Hexburg Devlog. <laughs> Plagues, fires, and natural disasters in general are a prominent part of city building games, either as acts of god that mess up your perfectly planned out city, or as a cathartic way to end a long game by smacking a meteor into the middle of a densely populated area. Due to that reason, and the fact that disasters were indeed very common in medieval cities, I decided to implement some in my game. The two that spring to mind first are plagues and fires. They make sense in a hexagonal grid because I can quite easily define how for example a fire spreads from cell to cell. So, the plan for today is to make a system in which fires and plagues can appear randomly during the game, in a random place, then spread, and finally die down after causing some havoc. But before that, a quick side quest. What do plagues and fires have in common? Well, they leave a lot of people dead. The people in the game can die, but at the moment they just sort of... vanish. So let's fix that by having a corpse appear when a person dies and then fall to the floor. I made this handy console command to kill half the population for testing. It's so sad. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. Perfect, it works. Now when another catastrophe rolls around, we'll be able to see the loss of life in crystal clear detail. I also added this small feature that when someone dies, an actual grave appears on a graveyard. When you hover over one, you can actually see the details of who's buried there. Like this person I just killed, or this one. Huh, that's a weird name. Anyway. Now, let's get the outbreaks actually appearing. They need to be tied to some relevant statistic of a cell, otherwise we'll have water burst into flames. The same goes for plagues, so that they will be more likely to appear in places that for example have animals, instead of relatively clean upper class housing. Not that any houses in medieval times were clean. The way I implemented this is by having an associated cell statistic for each outbreak. For plagues it's health and for fires it's fire hazard. Now I can define how prone to each outbreak a given cell is and even implement game mechanics that allow to mitigate that risk, such as making wells decrease the fire risk and hospitals increase the health. With that data I can just check from time to time if there exists a suitable cell to start an outbreak, roll a die influenced by the relevant statistic and ta-da! We have a working way of making outbreaks appear that can be influenced by the player. The same tile data can be used to regulate how an outbreak spreads. For example, if we have a cell that's on fire, it can check all its neighbors and for each one once again roll a die influenced with the fire hazard to see if the fire should spread or not. Okay, so we can now make an outbreak appear and spread. Great, but fortunately fires and plagues don't last forever. We need to somehow limit their range and duration. For that, let's add another per cell and per outbreak variable, strength. When, for example, a plague will appear, it will have a random strength. Then, over time, this strength will decrease, and when it reaches zero, the plague will dissipate from the cell. We can also make the strength decrease upon transmission from cell to cell, to make the range of the plague limited. The added bonus is that now we can either make a small, weak outbreak by spawning it with low initial strength, or a hell merry global pandemic by making it very strong from the get-go. Finally, it's time for the consequences. A fire will have a chance of consuming whichever cell it is on, as well as killing some of the people on it. I also added this beautiful looking burned ruin style that appears when a fire is finished. You can either demolish it or click this button to rebuild whichever cell was there before. As for the plague, well, it won't destroy the building, but the people living or working there... Mm, now I'll just add some pretty particle effects that I stole, I mean borrowed, from this unity pack. And we can finally sit back and enjoy some mayhem. And that's everything for today. If you want to keep up with the development of the game, consider subscribing, commenting, liking, and I'll see you next time.
Bye.